Hey guys, I'm going to answer a question that was put to me. So here we go. I've been following your channel for some time now and your videos inspired me to develop an application which I recently sold to an IT company. Fantastic. I remember how I enjoyed working on that project and I could code for 10 hours a day. Yeah, that's because it was your project, your idea, your baby from start to finish. Very motivating. So he goes on. A few weeks ago, I joined a startup company for which I work remotely and I find it really hard to focus on working on their project because I end up distracted by Facebook, YouTube or something else rather than working. Is this common for developers? How can I increase my productivity? Every developer is going to find themselves on projects that are boring. That's kind of normal. Now for you, you've got a bit of a double whammy here in the sense that you went from the coolest aspect of software development, developing your own app and then selling it. That's like, that's the coolest to working on somebody else's project, which is, can be cool, but it's not nearly as cool. So you went from driving a, I don't know, a Porsche 911 on the track on the Autobahn going 160 miles per hour to uh, driving a bicycle now or driving a Toyota or something in a school zone. Yeah, it's hard to get excited driving that Toyota in the school zone when you just drove the Porsche 911 on the Autobahn. So that's one of the issues you're faced with now. So how do you deal with this? Well, first of all, I want you to keep in mind that your reputation as a developer is dependent on the last job that you do. So whatever you do, even if it's boring, you got to have some discipline here and show that team of developers at the startup, show them that you do good work. You're going to live up to your word and reputation. Why is it important that you do that? Because these startup people are going to be involved in apps and coding probably for a long time. So if you develop a good reputation with them, that will spread. It will be good for your career, no matter what you do. So keep in mind, you want to make sure you keep your reputation intact. So it's, up, it's good for you that you do the work, even if it's boring. So how do you make it more interesting? Well, you could gamify the process. You can try to make a game out of writing really good code for particular modules you might be building. That's one strategy. Another strategy I actually got from boxing. And that's about creating psychological anchors and having discipline put into your coding process. So let me just get into with the boxing. When I was boxing, it was very important for us, according to our coach, who was a highly, highly, highly um, capable and uh, a great fighter. He won 77 out of 79 fights, which is an amazing record. Anyhow. In ring sports, you have the bell. The buzzer starts, bing, 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 and you start training and are fighting, and then the buzzer, the buzzer rings again, bing, 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 or the bell, and then you rest. There's a rest period. Sometimes the fighting period is like whatever, three minutes, five minutes, sometimes, you know, depending on the sport that you're doing, the ring sport that you're doing, and the rest period is usually about a minute. So what the coach would tell us, no matter what, when the bell rings, you train. You train for that whole three minutes. No matter what, even if you're tired, you don't feel like it, you train. It was about that discipline. And on the flip side, when the bell rang for you to take a break, he didn't want people training during the break period. Even if you felt like it, he said, nope, this is the break period. You don't train, you rest. Then the bell would ring again, you train again. And I didn't understand why we did that initially, but it became very clear because what happens is you start training your brain, but no matter what, when the bell says you fight, you fight, or you train, you train, and the bell says you rest, you rest, it creates a discipline. And the bell would ring, it would be bam, it would be a, or it'd be the bell ring, bing, bing, bing. And that creates a, um, a trigger with your brain. And the old lizard brain, as I spoke about before, starts uh, becoming, um, becoming trained in that. So perhaps you can integrate that type of thinking in your coding. So when you sit down to write code, Let's say it's an hour, two hours, or 40 minutes, whatever it happens to be, set, maybe set a timer that rings after that period of time that you've allotted to coding. And during that coding time, you don't have Facebook on, you don't have YouTube on, you don't have Twitter. That's all shut off. You're just coding. And when that bell rings to take a break from coding, the break could be 15 minutes, could be half an hour. I don't know what it would be for you. But when that bell rings, you, you close the coding, and then you do your Facebook, you do your YouTube, whatever you want to do. 
And then when the bell rings again to go back and code, you code. And you do this for a week or so, and next thing you know, it's going to start becoming habit. You're starting to train your brain to respond. But when you're in the coding cycle, when the bell rings to code, you code. When the bell rings to rest, you rest. That's one way to get through it. After you get through this project and you do a great job and you increase your reputation, you increase your status amongst the startup, then you're going to have many more opportunities because first you've built a really good reputation. That's a good goal. And then now you'll know what to look for in terms of your next project. Maybe go back to creating your own app from scratch and selling it. Who knows? Or maybe choosing uh, the next job with a startup or whoever in a technology that in, that's interesting to you. One of the things I would do was do new tech, learn new tech. And that was kind of interesting to me because what's important with every new job that you do, it's important, especially in the first few years, is to build up your skill sets and experiences. So you might do one project in uh, Node.js. You might do another project in C Sharp Unity. You might do another project with Python and do some AI stuff with TensorFlow. I don't know. Point is, you start experimenting and working on real world projects in different areas, that's, that's just going to help your career. At the end of the day, though, given that you're able to build your own app from scratch and sell it, that's cool. And you may want to look at that another opportunity in that regard, building your own app from scratch and selling it. Because as you know, as you just told me, it's a lot more fun building your own app. I know you feel it. Trust me, trust me. Finally, besides choosing a good technology and all the things I talked about just now, another thing is just the subject matter. You may find that, I don't know, the subject matter you're working on for the startup is not terribly exciting. So you may want to look at that as well. What, what subject, subject is exciting for you? So you know, for me, I remember the most fun I have to admit ever in terms of writing an app was my dating app. And it was just an experiment, but it, it grew and it was like, it was like, I preferred writing the code for my dating app than playing video games or a whole bunch of other things because it was just too much fun. Anyway, that's another story. All right, I hope that helps. Bye.